You know, most kids, toddlers really, draw stick figures of horses and people and houses. I always drew cars. Even at age like two and a half or three, I was drawing cars. As I grew older, I built model cars uh, and I would ride my bike to my father's auto body repair shop. It was body re shop. And he didn't, didn't want me to get too comfortable there. So I spent a little time there and he, what he didn't realize, I would then ride my bike to another shop and then another shop. And I would go to different shops around town, just hanging out, you know, watching them uh, work on cars. I was, I loved cars, just crazy about it. And I loved the auto show. The auto show was my fantasy land, my Disney world, you know, and, I, and the bright colors and the cars, the displays, the music, all of that. I absolutely loved it. When I was eight years old, my parents took me. And as we're going through the auto show, there was this one concept car that stood out. And I'll never forget, it was like, it was last week, you know, my mother's on my right, my father's on my left. And as I looked at the concept car, I said, when I grow up, I wanna design cars for that company. I was eight years old. The car was the Cadillac Cyclone. And that was the moment that it just, you know, I love cars and I love drawing them and building models, but that was the moment where I said, I want to make a career designing cars. Now, I, I never really sent any of my designs to General Motors as a kid. What I did, I wrote letters. First letter I wrote was at age 11, just asking, you know, what training do I need? Is this engineering? Is it art? Is it science? What is design? And what do I need to study to become a designer? And they sent me great information. They sent a great packet of information about design, about schools in design with a major in design. And uh, I just followed their lead. And I stayed in communication with them through uh, high school and college. As, as a kid, I was so focused. I mean, it's almost like a tunnel vision I had on becoming a car designer. I never thought about the people of design. I just saw these great cars, and it was really GM, the, the great General Motors cars, and I was focused on that. I never thought about, you know, did they have African American designers or not? And if they didn't, would I be accept, well accepted? My parents were concerned, but they never really talked about it because they didn't want that to to temper or cause me, yeah, in, in any way. They, they didn't want to slow me down. You know, my very first day at General Motors, I, as I walked in, I, I was just so excited. I mean, this has been my dream since, you know, childhood to become a designer for General Motors. But it wasn't long until after I started work there that I realized that I was representing more than myself. I realized that my performance, my actions, in some ways uh, was a judge of all African Americans. And, and I'll be honest, I think the second person they hired had a more difficult time than I did. Uh, because their assumption was that, you know, the second person would be just like Ed Welburn. They were happy with my performance. They were happy with me as a person. And they assumed that the second person would be just like me. And they actually, and that person didn't last that long. And they actually told them that they were disappointed. We thought we had another Ed Welburn. That's terrible. Well, you know, there are many levels in the design field, I think probably around seven of them. You know, four that are, uh, you know, regular designers that gradually move up the ladder. And then there are three levels of executives up to the VP of design. And with each one of those levels I moved up, I was in fact the first African American to take that step. And all the way 
in that progression. I never really celebrated that fact. Um, probably should to some degree, but you know, I, it also meant that, okay, I was the first African American to progress on each one of those steps. It also meant that for many years, there are others that did not, you know, did not have the opportunity for one reason or another. And so that always kind of tempered my celebration of that, that step that I was taking. Did you feel the sort of pressure of, of that? So just as you were climbing up, there's also this. You know, I, I always felt to some degree that I was on display or that, you know, people were watching what I did. It's true for all designers, but I think if, if, if you're the only African American, then, then more attention goes to you. I mean, as I mentioned, there are different levels of designer. And I think like four levels of, you know, designers who were sketching and contributing and, and at each level you're taking on more responsibility and then there are three executive levels. When I was at the top of that lower tier of designers, just shy of becoming an executive, I was having annual uh, review with my supervisor and my supervisor, yeah, he's trying to, to help me, you know, in every way. He's trying to be helpful. He said, you know, you're doing an outstanding job, incredible job. But General Motors, it's a very different period of time now, will never make an African-American an executive. So you need to face up to that, the fact that you're going to stay at this level for the rest of your career or think about working someplace else. You know, and it was like, I had just been hit by Mike Tyson, you know, but, um, and it took me a couple of days to kind of, you know, shake it off. It, not shake it off, but, you know, clear, clear my head. And I decided, you know, no, I'm not going to leave. General Motors. I'm going to stay there and keep pushing. And within a year, I was promoted to an executive position. But uh, yeah, that, that, even to this day, it kind of stuns me to even talk about that. Uh, there was a time, you know, before I started working at a studio in Germany, I was at executive level then, and everyone, you know, I had family members who were concerned, how are they going to treat you in Germany and all of that, you know, an African American, is, you know, are you going to be well accepted there? And I wasn't concerned at all. And the day before I left, uh, some of the people in the studio that I had been working in in Michigan took me out to dinner, we went out to dinner, and after dinner, when I pulled out a parking lot, I got pulled over by not one, but three police cars. And it was late at night, and there weren't many lights except for the red and blue lights from their cars. I mean, three, not one, but three. And they, I had to get out of the car, and they asked me a lot of questions, and they wanted me to walk a line, and that, all this. And, and I knew I hadn't been speeding because I had just left. And with the car I was riding, there's no way I could have reached the speed limit in that length of time. And I hadn't had, I only had, I think, one beer. Because, you know, I had all the stuff to continue to do to get ready for the trip. And I'm not a beer drinker, so I figured if I have a beer, I'll just sip on that all evening. And uh, so, yeah, they gave me a hard time, and it wasn't until... I produced my pass. I showed them, you know, I just work right down the street here. I'm a, an executive with General Motors. And when I told them that, then they let me go. And, and very few people know that story about me. You know, it's, you know, you, he, you hear so many stories like that. And they say, well, you know, Ed, you've lived a very protected, you know, life and all of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think the, the diversity within design was a global diversity. And, I, and, you know, when I was named VP of Design, it was for North America. And all my predecessors were VP for De General Motors Design North America. Harley Earl, Bill Mitchell, all of them. They had some influence on the few G GM studios that were around the world, but they didn't, those studios didn't report to them. There was a studio in Germany, there was one in England for a while, and there was one in Brazil, one in Australia. South Africa had a studio until apartheid. Uh, within two years of me running design and creating a relationship with the other studios, the decision was made to make this one global organization. And uh, the same was done with engineering as well. Um, because I knew the people in design at the other studios and we had a great relationship, it all came together fairly quickly. Um, that really allowed me to pull the resources of designers in Korea, China, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, and that diverse thought was so powerful, incredibly empowered, and, and being able to move the people around, you know, uh, helped as well. Uh, we continue to have the challenge, and still do, here in North America, of not having as many African Americans in design as I think we should have. Um, it's a long process, and the feeder system needs to be diverse in order, you know, if you want to hire young African Americans in automobile design, the schools have got to have them, and then the schools that feed the design schools have got to have them as well. So. It's an incredible challenge. I, I'm so excited about the future of design. I, I really am. And, and uh, the opportunities, the creative opportunities. Sloan said many, many years ago, he said that, you know, no matter what technology you create, your company won't have it as an exclusive forever whether it's an automatic transmission, his time automatic transmission or self-starter, one company has it, all the companies eventually will have it. He said that, you know, that the great differentiator is design. And I, it was true then, it's true today. And in the future, if everyone's moving to electric power propulsion in their vehicles, that will be somewhat the same with every car company, design will continue to be the great differentiator. And that's what makes it so very important. And I think the technologies will actually stimulate, you know, design. What advice would you give a young designer looking up at you with their sketch pad in their hand? I, I would say, you know, work hard, stay committed to it. Don't let anyone tell you no keep pushing forward, take risk, take risk. I immediately think of two. Uh, one was the Trumpet Award that I received in Atlanta uh, for two reasons. I, I was very honored, I felt very honored to receive that award. I received the same time that Shaka Khan received an award and, and so we, uh, I met her then, but most important at that event is where I met Jesse Elliott, who I eventually married. We met there at that event, which made it special. Uh, but the other award that I received that meant so much to me was being inducted into the Automotive Hall of Fame. My lifelong heroes in design are in the Automotive Hall of Fame people that I have looked up to, that I have learned so much from. And to receive that award and really to stand among my heroes was unbelievable. It just, 
beyond any other award I've ever received. That, that was special and continues to be special for me. You know, I've, uh, I've had a wonderful career. I've just absolutely wonderful career. And, you know, I pinch myself. Uh, a f one of my favorite photographs is of me and uh, Barack Obama sitting in a, in a car talking. And, um, you know, it was at the Washington DC auto show and there's a special exhibit that I was taking him through. And when he got in the car, I said, well, I better run around and get in the other side and explain the interiors. So I ran around, got in, and I just, we both closed our doors. And, you know, I was like, all of a sudden, there I am in this car with the President of the United States, just the two of us, you know, and, and the media's going nuts, taking pictures, and Secret Service was watching closely, you know, and, and so we're in the car, and I started to explain the interior. And, and, you know, I was telling him how proud I was of the team that designed this interior. And he turned to me and said, Ed, we're proud of you. And then the two of us had this great conversation about, you know, although I'm certainly nowhere near the level of Barack Obama, President of the United States, but, you know, we had some similar experiences.